Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Your word says the entrance of your word that brings light and it gives understanding to the simple. I pray that even as your word comes today, may you bring understanding in the name of Jesus. May we understand your word. May the simplicity of your word bring changes in the lives of your people. At the end of the service, we will be transformed. Our lives will be changed. We will be impacted. We will know you better. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Please, how many of us are born again? If you are born again, I want to see you. Born again. It's powerful. So as we are born again, how many of us know Jesus? You know Jesus. But let me prove you. I'm tempted to call someone to come and tell me who Jesus is. Does somebody want to volunteer? Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Somebody wants to volunteer that. He is Jesus. So when somebody say, describe him to me, I'm asking that question because I went, went on outreach, I think, three weeks back, and we met this Muslim. And when we began to speak to her, she said, she's a Muslim, but she's willing to listen, so we should, we should go ahead and evangelize to her. As we were speaking to her, she said that, well, she, she believes Jesus is there, and she believes him as a prophet. And that as a prophet, yes, he was born of a virgin Mary, of a virgin. And that she even believes that one day Jesus will come back as a judge. And that was a bit away from me. It was the first time I was hearing that part of as a judge. But I want to ask, what do you know about Jesus? If somebody calls you and says, Gifty, come and tell me, who is this Jesus you are following so much? What can you tell him? In this month, our team is Jesus. But I thought you celebrate the name of, because that is the name that at the mention of which every knee bows and every tongue confesses that this Jesus is Lord. And so God the Father is glorified. You see, a lot of us don't put weight on this name. We don't know the value of it. So we, it's not weighty for us. What did Jesus say? It is not as powerful as when you hear that your visa has come. Kamika says, you see, our visa Abba. When you are 10 years visa to America. Oh, in fact, you'd have been jumping and screaming and everything. But I'm mentioning the name that is above every name. The name at which every knee will bow. You know, he says, of things in heaven, on things on earth, even on things under the earth. When this name Jesus is mentioned, everything must subject to that name. He is Lord. Amen. So who is, who is Jesus? That's the question. Who is he? Do they want to know who he is? Some of us have been Christian for the past 20 years. Who is Jesus? So I'm looking at first, it's in two divisions. Jesus is man and Jesus is God. Some people say that, oh, Jesus is no He is half man and half God. No, but he is fully man in the, when he was a man or in the, in the sense of a man. And he is fully God. He is not half man and half God. In the so, yes, no, that's why he didn't do the same things. It's not so. He is fully man. The reason why he is man, number one, is because he was born. Everybody who must become human must be born. So when God created, he said, let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. Everything God produced was supposed to be able to produce its kind. So you will not have a cow producing a goat. Or you cannot have a chicken producing a duck. You will not have a lion giving birth to a cat. So everything that was produced produces its kind. Amen. 
today and you must be ready to learn because you are le- we'll be learning a lot. It's more of getting to know who this Jesus is. I realized that for a long time, people being, are in church and they don't even know the foundations of this thing. That's the reason why a little wind that blows you, blows you out of the church because you didn't even have an encounter with Jesus. Today, be ready for an encounter in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, why must I know him? The Bible says, Paul said that, that I may know him. Who has that cry this morning? That I may know him. Do you want to know Jesus? It says that I may know him, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. So the reason for today's service is that, that we may know Jesus. He's our focus for this year. This year you are saying that come. Who should you come on to? Who are we coming on to? If you are coming on to this Jesus, we would want to know him. So when he was born, legitimacy on, in this realm on earth is given to people who are born by humans. So Jesus couldn't have just descended. One day you are there, then the cloud opens. Then Jesus is coming on the cloud. He appears here. He is the Messiah. He's coming to save his people from their sins. No. God could have done it that way. But per the rules of engagement, that will not have qualified Jesus to be able to die for us. Because the person who must die for humans must be a human being. It's the reason why God placed a seed in, in Mary and Mary gave birth to Jesus. So Jesus was born so because he was born, he's fully human. He is not on yet. It's not, it's as if some people feel that it's like a grafted tree. When you put a tangerine tree and, a, and, a, and an orange tree together, the produce of it, no. Jesus is fully human. In Luke chapter 2 verse 7, in Luke chapter 2 verse 7, the Bible talked about when Jesus was born. That on that day, Mary gave birth to Jesus. said, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them. So this was when Jesus was born. So because Jesus was born onto the earth, he is man. Not half, half. He is man. The other reason why Jesus is human is because he was hungry and thirsty. You, can't, you don't have spirits being hungry. Have you ever heard in the Bible that an angel came to man and said that, Oh, and come to me, It's never happened. The time that God came, the angels that came to Abraham for him to cook for them, they manifested in the flesh. Is a reason why they ask for food. But at no point in the Bible will you see an angel come in the form of an angel asking for food. Spirits don't eat. And like a demon Because there are a lot of demons everywhere. And the demons in the world would have consumed the food. Because they are, they are more than humans. At every point in time, the demons around, the evil spirits around are more than human beings. So they have eaten all the food. Because they don't go hungry, they don't need food. But Jesus, because he was man, not spirit, at the time he came to the earth, he was hungry. Let's look at Matthew chapter 4 verse 2. Matthew chapter 4 verse 2. That was when Jesus was hungry. And he was thirsty too. He needed water to quench his thirst. The Bible says in Matthew 4 verse 2 that and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. You see, if he was a spirit, he wouldn't need to eat. He would have just continued the fast like that. In the heavenly realm, there was no need for him to be eaten. But when he, as man, he needs to eat. So Jesus is man. Jesus is human. One, because he was born. Two, 
because he was hungry and he was thirsty. When he met the woman of Samaria at the well, he asked her for a drink. It means that he was thirsty at that time. If he was not thirsty, he wouldn't have been asking for water. The next reason why Jesus is man is because he slept. God doesn't sleep. Spirits, they don't sleep. The devil, he is not sleeping. But Jesus slept when he came on earth as a man. Matthew 8, verse 23 to 24. So the Bible says that the God we serve, he doesn't sleep nor slumber. So at no point will you, will you be praying and God will say, Oh, my dad, I cry. I'm sure. No, no, no. God never sleeps. You will never be, be calling on him. And he will say, oh, I'm taking a nap. I'll be back. You remember when Elijah and the people had the contest? He told the people to, oh, knock harder, do strange stuff. They were shouting, they were screaming, they were cutting themselves. Baal they didn't see. But at one request, when Elijah said that fire should come down, immediately fire came down from heaven. That shows that God does not sleep. So in the spirit, spirits don't sleep. But Jesus, when he was man, he slept. But glory be to him that now he is no longer man, he is God. So he doesn't sleep. So that request that you have placed before him, he will watch upon it and he will perform it in his time in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? He's faithful. He is faithful. Amen. I want us to move and look at why Jesus is God. I think I'll spend more time on this one because a lot of people don't know that he is God. When I ask you that, is Jesus God? You say yes. Then I ask you, give me a scripture. Then you say, I and my father are one. At the best, that's all you know about why he is God. But Jesus is God. He is God because he created the world. Somebody said, really? Jesus created the world. When we go to Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to verse 3, the Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light and there was light do you see jesus here oh you see jesus here rather the saying then god said you go to john chapter 1 verse 1 it says that in the beginning was the word john 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god so in Genesis, Jesus was the word that was spoken. He represented in, the, in Genesis as the word. So you, at that time, he didn't have a name. He was not called Jesus then. So in, when you come to John 1 verse 1, see, in the beginning was the word. And this word was with God, and the word was God. Go to verse 2. It was in the beginning with, the father, with God. It was in the beginning with God. Continue. Three. All things were made through him. All things were made out through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. So Jesus was, a, was the creator. All things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Let's see it clearer. Go to Colossians 1 verse 15 to 17. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 to 17. He said, In, He is the image of the invincible God, the first one over all creation. For by him all things were, were created. For by him all things were created. Things in heaven, the things on earth, things you can see, things you cannot see. Whether they are thrones, whether they are dominions, 
whether they are principalities or powers, all these things were created through him and they were created for him. They were created through Jesus and he's the reason why the creation power was done. It was for him. Jesus is the creator. Go to Hebrews 1 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. That you know that this Jesus we serve is not only the son of God, but he is God himself. He says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets too, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. He's the one everything is going to be given to, through whom also he made the worlds. The world was made through this Jesus, verse 10. The world was made through Jesus, 10, 10, 1, 10. And you, Lord, so this is God speaking. He was talking to Jesus. So he called Jesus, you, Lord, in the beginning, laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. The heavens are the works of the hands of Jesus. Our Jesus is the creator. He is not only the son of God, but he created. So let's not belittle him. Don't look down upon him. He is God. So tomorrow when somebody asks you, that is Jesus God? Yes, scripture says that he is God. Because all things were made for him. All things were made through him. Without him was not anything made. That was made. I pray that God does a creative work in your life right now in the name of Jesus. As you believe that he is a creator, may he create the, that thing for you, that thing that you need so much. May he cut away that disease out of you. May he create a new womb for you. May he create a new mind for you. May he create a new lung for you. May he create something new in your life right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you believe him or when you see him as a creator, he does new things for you. I heard about, a man of God talked about a service he was in. And he began to pray that the creative power of God be made manifest. Somebody was, came to the service and was short. At the time he was leaving, he became tall. God has created, right? If God created us, and you don't know how when you slept and you wake up, you change from a cafe to Amanda. You won't know how God would can bring something new into your life. Oh, you, I thought you're celebrating him. So God will create something new in your life in the name of Jesus. In a minute, you want to pray. What do you want him to create for you? Just one minute. Pray that you should create that thing. Do you have ulcer? Say that God created a new stomach for me. What sickness is it that you want God to take out and create a new one in the name of Jesus? So we come before the creator God and we believe you, Jehovah. Lord Jesus, you are the creator. Create new things, new memory, new brains. New utterance, a new voice, new hearings, new sights. New sights. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is done to the glory of God. Amen. The next reason why Jesus is God is because he was worshipped. Jesus was worshipped. Notice this. When you read the Bible, at no point in time does anything receive worship. There was a time that during Revelations, John the Revelator, he wanted to worship the, the angel that had shown him the entire thing. He was so surprised at the things he was shown that he bowed down to that angel. But the angel rebuked him from doing that in Revelations 22 verse 8. Revelation 22 verse 8. Such awesome stuff the angel had re revealed. <clears throat> Look at it. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. 
And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. The next one. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant, and of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who keep the words of the book, worship God. So only one person deserves worship, and that is God. At every point in time, when you try to give it to an angel, he refuses it. Because he knows the repercussions of it. It was only Satan who desired the worship. And that's how come he was casted out of heaven. So anyone who tries to take worship has a punishment. Let's look at Acts chapter 12. One day King Herod, not the one that was alive during Jesus' time. After Jesus' time, there was another Herod. Acts chapter 12. He went to have a public speech. And people loved the way he was talking. They began to praise him. Acts chapter 12. They began to praise him. They began to hail him. They're like, Charlie, this, this voice, no. It's not man talking. It is God himself who is talking. Acts chapter 12, verse 20. It's God himself who is speaking. Verse 20. He says, Now Herod had been very ang- angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, but they came to him with one accord, and having made Blastus the king's personal aid, their friend, they asked for peace, because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. So these people had done something to Herod and he was not happy about it. So their aim of coming to Herod was to appease him. So he came with flashes and stuff. So this, when he said Herod was making an oration, it means he was making a public speech to them. So he was standing up the podium and he was talking to them. The people, the 12, 22 says, And the people kept shouting the voice of a God, not of man. They kept praising Herod. Now Herod, this voice you are speaking is like God speaking to us. It's not human beings' words. Instead of he shutting them down, he kept receiving the appellation. Look at this. Then immediately, an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. Let us watch it. All, the, all of God's glory that we are trying to collect. No, let's stop collecting it. May God help us. And he was eaten by worms and died immediately. So imagine as he was standing on the podium, a honana, the angel struck him and worms began to eat him. At least I know that my science, mom, but those who did the science, when you die, the worms will not eat you immediately. That's true, right? Oh, we say same Okay, please. Sugar waha. Please. When you when the when you die, will you begin immediately? Will you see worms coming out of your body? But in this case, immediately there. Not five minutes past, so immediately he fell down. Worms began to eat his body. The glory that belongs to God, then let's give it to him. It's a fearful thing. The Bible talks about some things that only God deserves. He says, vengeance is mine, and I will pay. Vengeance belongs to God. It is not a man thing. So you must give the vengeance to God to repay himself. He says, the glory belongs to me. That no flesh will glory in my presence. The glory belongs to God. And the glory that belongs to God must be given to God. So when people come to you and they are saying that, e, nah, say, Men and the twa, yes, you are behaving like God. I said, please, like, take me out of that. Take me out of that. Don't receive that glory. Don't receive that glory. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Then we see Jesus. He is receiving glory. He is receiving worship. And God doesn't smote him dead. It means he deserves worship. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6. 
Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6. But when he again brings the first one into the world, he said, this is still God talking about Jesus. Let all the angels of God worship him. God himself is commanding that all the angels shall worship Jesus. Is he not God? Is Jesus not God? Because if he was not God, God would not be commanding angels to worship him. Do you understand? So at the point where God is commanding angels to worship this man, he is God. So he deserves our worship. You know, sometimes somebody will tell you that, ah, this is not Nebiya Muni. Every day are saying Jesus. Every day are saying the name of Jesus. He is not God, though. There is a God. No, he is also God. He deserves our worship. If God did command angels to bow down to him, then we have the right to bow down to him. It is okay when you worship him. In the name of Jesus. When you read Daniel chapter 7 verse 13. Daniel 7 verse 13 and 14. Daniel prophesied about the fact that Jesus will be worshipped. Daniel chapter 7 verse 13 says, I was watching in the night's vision. And behold, one like the son of man. Who is called the son of man? Coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient of days. Who is the ancient of days? God. He came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and kingdom that all peoples, take note of this, all peoples, all nations, all languages should serve him. Another version used the word should worship him. Jesus is God. He deserves our worship. All peoples, all nations were brought before him that they worship him. In a minute, you want to tell him that you are beautiful. Lord Jesus, you are beautiful. I extol you. I magnify you. You alone, you are Lord. In the name of Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you. This is his manner in the name of Jesus. Amen. When we look at Luke chapter 24, this time on, Jesus is actually worshipped. Jesus receives actual worship in Luke chapter 24, verse 51. Luke 24, verse 51. Jesus receives actual worship. Luke chapter 24, verse 51 says, All he was blessing. Now it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Please continue. And they worshipped him. And they worshipped him. He was actually worshipped here. If he didn't deserve it, he would have refused it. Don't be confused from today. Jesus deserves our worship. He deserves our heart. Jesus must be worshipped. So people will come to you and say that, oh, but there, should be, there is only one God. Jesus is not God. Jesus is the son of God. To make it look like he is lower than God. When they say the son of God. But scripture makes us understand that this Jesus deserves to be worshipped. Amen. The next point is that he is a giver of eternal life. Jesus is God because he's the one who gives the God kind of life. He's the one who gives eternal life. So the Bible says, for God so loved the world. Please say it together. For God so loved the world. So when you believe in Jesus, you have everlasting life. You have eternal life. He is the one in whom eternal life is placed. Jesus. Eternal life is life forever. That's about Nazi Afebo. And it's only God who has that kind of life. So anybody who can give you that is also God. 
You understand? So let's say, for instance, all the money in Ghana is in your hands. All the money in Ghana. They have given it to you. You are the one keeping the money in Ghana. Okay. Before we see somebody holding money, then it means that the person has seen you. Is that true? It's true, right? Or the keys to this auditorium is in your hands. Before you see you entering this room, it means you have seen the person who has the keys. If not, you couldn't have entered. So if God is the one who has eternal life, and now he's saying that if you believe in Jesus, you have this life, then it means that Jesus has been as God to be able to give you eternal life. Let's read 1 John chapter 5, from verse 10 to 13. 1 John chapter 5, from verse 10 to 13. First John chapter 5, verse 10 to 13. He says, He who believes in the Son of God has witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. So he's about to tell us about the testimony God has given of his Son. 11 says, And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. God has given us what? God has given us what? And this life is in his who is the son so eternal life is in Jesus go to 13 these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life if you believe in the name of the son of God then you are born again so if you are born again here today know that you have eternal life it will not be given to you in future it has been given to you by believing in the name of Jesus. And Jesus was given the authority to give us eternal life. Therefore, Jesus is God. Amen. And the last thing I want to talk about, about Jesus being God, is that he is a judge of all. Judgment originally belongs to God. God is supposed to be the judge of all things. John Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. But judgment has been given to Jesus to give. So by Jesus being the judge of all flesh, he is God. Today, I'm making, I'm making a case for Jesus. A lot of us don't know who the Jesus we worship is. So we don't appreciate him enough. We cannot worship him well. We cannot, we don't put the right expectations on him. Because as I see, Jesus is God's small boy. Like you must go and talk to Jesus for him to go and talk to God. See, that's why some people even talk to Mary, then they talk to Jesus, then they talk to God. No, 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 no. It's not like that. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will charge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Who will do what? He will judge the living and the dead. So this Jesus has the power to judge. So if you are here and don't know this Jesus, you have lost it. Without him, there is no access to eternal life. There are other ways that lead to other places. But the only way that leads to heaven is through Jesus. That if you do not know this Jesus, if you have not had this encounter with Jesus, if Jesus is not your Lord, then you do not have eternal life, then you cannot make it to heaven. So I want to give you, a, I want to give somebody a chance this morning. Let's please close our eyes. If you have not given your life to Jesus, please raise your hand. This is the most important decision you will take in your life. Sometimes you are, you, are, you, are, you are swinging left and right. That's what they are man. That's what I'm man here. You don't have an encounter with him. If you've not given your life to Jesus, kindly raise your hand. But if you have given your life to him, I want you to renew your, your love for him. Tell him to grant you grace to hold on to him. Tell him to help you that 
you will not be swayed away by the, the deception of sin. And the cares of this world do not take you away from his presence. That you will not lose your eternal life. That you will not miss him. It should grant you grace to be planted in him. It should grant you grace to be rooted in him. That you will have encounters with him. Heavenly Father, please help us. Help us to know you better. Help us to commit everything to you. Help us to love you. Help us. We pray for your help, Lord. I pray that God reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. I want to see you. I want to have encounters with you. Because if Jesus has not revealed himself to us, we will not know him. I pray that God, please reveal yourself to me. Reveal Jesus to me. I want to have encounters with him. How can we say we are worshiping him when we don't even know him? When we don't even have fellowship with the Father? We are praying that God, reveal yourself to me. Matthew 11, 27 says, All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And to those whom the Son chooses to reveal, ask God to choose to reveal Jesus to you. Ask Him to choose to reveal secrets in the Bible to you. That from today when you read the Bible, you will understand it. Father, let us love you. Let us love you. Let us love you. Let us value the things of God and the things of the world. Let the love for you consume our hearts. Father, reveal Jesus to us. That we will know you. Capture our hearts, Lord. Capture our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen.